man. You cannot marry a woman without gills. You're from two different worlds. Oh, I've wasted my life. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's kind of been a weird transition as we've come out of the pandemic. DC Comics stopped being exclusive to, to, um, to Diamond. Then they dropped them all together, so they're using the distri different distributors than essentially the entire industry. It's made it very difficult reporting on comic book sales numbers, although we've seen extreme spikes for debut issues of independent comics. We've even seen spikes of uh, you know, long-standing comics like Spawn on the independent scene. And it's, it's kind of hard to make heads or tails of this, and that's why I brought in the Pooba of comics himself, Perch, to help me out with this. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. So I'll, I'll get into this. There's two articles that came out recently. There's this one. This is from The Beat, and this is taking the numbers that were released from Diamond Comics as far as sales to retailers. And obviously, Diamond does not uh, ship DC Comics anymore, so the whole top ten list is Marvel Comics, right? Right. Uh, Smorgasbord and Marvel. Apparently, this comic here, Hero Zero Dawn from Titan Comics, came in at number 11, I believe. So we got our slate of, of top 10. And then there was another list from ICB2.com. And they include DC Comics. And this is what they call theirs. These are unit and dollar sales rankings based on sales tracked at point of sale by the Comic Hub, comic hub System as stores selling American comics around the world. During the period for which these reports were generated, there were roughly 85 stores using the Comic Hub System out of like, you know, 3,000. <laughs> As this is a small, non-random sample, how is that not random? Well, I mean, they're they're doing some. I mean, they're doing projections, but it but it is it's not random in that they're not just uh, I, I guess randomly taking numbers, but it is it is not representative of, of comics, and it also is you're placing a lot of weight into the idea that one region or one store sells a similar quantity to another, and and we we know that's not true, so. There, there's some analysis in here. I think those are smart guys, so they're they're trying well, to account for that. But who knows? These represent sales to actual consumers and not to stores, which makes this di list different. Right. And we see in here, like the top five is is easily DC Comics, all their Dark Knights, Death Metal, Batman, Three Jokers, Joker War stuff going on. We go in dollars generated is actually top six. Go, six go to DC Comics. But when we look at the Marvel stuff, like number six here is Venom 27, Thor number six. Those line up with what Diamond is reporting. But we go down here to number three, which is Empire number 11. We go here, and there, uh, X-Men number 11, here it is. But there's actually Maestro. You see on here, Maestro is all the way down here at number 17 overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number eight on Marvel. So the, the lists do not add up. And I find them very difficult. Like apparently Empire sold less to stores, but more to readers. Yeah, I, I mean, so the numbers don't add up. And unfortunately this is, I think, us trying to, to make sense of apples and oranges. I, I think this this highlights the fact that the the one, you, you if you're gonna track sales at a national level and call it a national level, you have to give a full sale. And that's why a lot of people complained about why don't we track or why don't we see the sales of what sells to the consumer? Why don't why do we just get the sales of what sells to the shop? Well, kind of for exactly this reason, because the sales to consumer is is very hard to nail down. It's it's you've got a lot of shops who do things in different ways. I mean, a, a, a small percentage of comic shops use Comics Hub. I mean, nowhere mm -hmm. even close to a majority. Uh, nowhere even close, I think, to, to fifteen percent of shops. And use you imagine Comics. that might be put into certain regions, like there's a like you own a comic book store in LA, you use the Comic Cub uh, app or the, the program and you like it and you tell your two friends there and that's saying, you know, you have a little network of people using Comic Cub or yes. Comic Hub, but maybe in Seattle, no one ever started using it. So there's no representation from there. No, and that's how it works. I mean, you do have referral bonuses for that software as well. So that, that scenario you're talking about is actually going to take, act, you know, that's absolutely going to take place. And I think the type of business that's going to use a Comic Hub is a different type of business. Comics Hub requires a lot of, of managing your, your inventory through software, online software. It usually means you have some level of online business or at least playing at that level. That's not all comic shops. So the numbers that are coming there are, are interesting from the standpoint of being able to go, okay, well, here's, here's kind of a general sense of what's happening. 
but it's not reliable as a, as a total picture. And I, I don't, you know, to, to their not defense, but I mean, they're, they're not claiming that it is. They, they, they caveat the numbers heavily throughout uh, by talking about this is, you know, a projection and this is a sample. And, and I, you know, so, so I don't think they're trying to pretend there's something they're not. Um, but it, it does, you know, kind of, again, on the other end of the spectrum, you have the way numbers have traditionally been reported through Diamond, which is sales to stores, not to customers. And so there you're heavily weighted by incentive programs and shops having to order more than they want because they're trying to get a variant cover. And so that's also skewing the numbers. And so all in all, it's, it's, we do not have a reliable system for telling what sales. We have a bunch of kind of general sense. We know that three jokers got a lot of buzz. Of course, that's going to work. But like you point out- Jim Lee you know, said they sold over 300,000 copies. Yeah. And, and we also- I I, I believe it too, but I don't know how he's getting to that number. Is this comic sold? Is this including digital? Is this including kind of the, you know, they're doing some promotions in uh, over, I think, I believe in Canada where you could, you could get uh, some comics and get that one for free. So was that counted in that mix? Is it, is it moved or sold? We don't know. And, and I think that's the question with a lot of this stuff. And then so to your, I went off on a, a very long <laughs> tangent on there, but to your question of like, what's going on with say empire compared to X-Men. And I think it's, you know, it, I think my guess is, yes, more Empire sold to customers than X-Men number 11, which I suspect many people listening to this right now are shaking their heads in disbelief. But i give you another piece of anecdotal evidence. When we talked to stores, when I've talked to shops and other retailers looked at boards, what they were seeing was a strong interest in the big events as we were coming out of the pandemic even Empire, which a lot of people underordered on, was moving much more briskly to customers, and it it makes some level of sense. It's you know with with fewer dollars to spend, you're going to go for kind of what the company's promoting, and they went for Empire. The art got some nice buzz. The I think the reviews came out that wasn't as bad as people thought. So more from what I heard, a lot more is moving to cons consumers. Simultaneously. Um, I keep hearing, and the numbers haven't reflect that, that the X-Men line is showing a lot of signs of fatigue. And, I, you know, we've, we've talked about it on, on reviews and on shows. I know the X-Men fans are super pumped about X-Men. Wonderful. But if you look at the numbers, even going into the pandemic, when we were getting reliable numbers, you were seeing a heavy erosion of the X-Men line once you got past, okay, say, X-Men, X-Force, Wolverine. You saw those books falling. And if that trajectory continued, as they came back from the pandemic, and we knew that many comics did, you know, things were, were, were sagging. But there are also a lot of incentive programs and other things going on with X-Men. So it would make sense that the shops were ordering more X-Men and selling less of them. That, that's my, I, I don't know if I'm correct, but that's my analysis. <laughs> so I do think we do have a general sense that DC, as far as the top of the line, is doing better right down the, now than Marvel. I believe that just based on what I've seen in my channel, based on enthusiasm from uh, uh, commenters and things like that, that Batman 3 Jokers, Dark Knight's Death Metal, Batman Joker War, even Deceased we see here at number eight, are doing very well. People are really excited about those. And it's really Donny Cates. It's not the big events. It's Donny Cates on Venom and Thor yeah. that people are really excited about with Marvel. It's like, is he holding Marvel up right now? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Donny Cates is responsible for a lot of their success. And I, and I do think, you know, Hickman, as, despite what I just said, I think Hickman and the X-Men line is kind of the other half of that. Well, yeah, um, you see X-Men, Wolverine, yeah. uh, X-Force, Marauders, giant size X-Men. The, the challenge that X-Men has is that, is that true? You know, Donny Cates, month over month, is holding his audience or even growing it. If you look at the mm -hmm. numbers, he's, it's, it's a... It's a flat or slightly increasing line. And in this case, flat lines are good for comics because almost every comic has a natural descent to it. Um, the X-Men line is showing that descent, especially, again, for the, the lower selling titles. And I, I mentioned this on a, a different video where what we are seeing right now is the erosion of the middle. You're seeing the, the, the hardcore fans that prop up the, the really low selling indie books, you know, the... The person who's a fan of Savage Dragon is still buying Savage Dragon, but that comic is moving, you know, 5,000 or less copies. On the very top, you see your Venom, your Thor, your your uh, Joker War books, your your Three Jokers, that kind of stuff. That That is selling actually more than it did a year ago. People have migrated up to the top. It's it's as if they, they either 
either one, Donny Cates is building his audience, which is probably true, or people are just spending their dollars on the big stuff. What we're seeing is everything from about 60,000 copies to about 15,000 copies is suffering. It's taking 20 to 30% drops in its numbers from what's starting to come in. Comic shops are also reporting these. People are abandoning the middle. And is that just Marvel and DC or is that um, Independence too? Because I know they're saying that Marvel and DC. Something is killing the children. Number eleven outsold number one. Yeah, it's it's definitely this is a Marvel and DC problem. The mm -hmm. indies okay. do not have the same situation going on. The, the, most of the indies are sitting at that lower tier. That's just the reality of kind of what they're doing. And the higher selling books, their their high selling books are growing. Yes. So it's, it's maybe say it a different way. The high selling books for every company are increasing. The low is holding stable, and the middle is disintegrating. Um, much like our. I think that has a lot to do with the, they, they kind of cut the fat out of DC and, and uh, Marvel. Like in August, Marvel shipped I think sixty nine new periodical comics. Normally, that would be between like one hundred and one twenty. So we're seeing a, a minimum a thirty percent decrease in production as far as new comic books. And so those readers that maybe had one or two comics on their pull that were canceled, they're just moving up. They're going, okay, I know Thor's solid. I know Venom solid, you know, the X-Men are solid. And they're kind of moving up rather than testing out the middle grounds. They, they don't want those to get canceled too, right? Yeah, exactly. I think I think it's people doing that. I think that it's uh, some people have a little bit less discretionary cash. I think people are spending, um, in some cases, less money in the comic shop. They're just spending it at the top level. Or, you know, another factor here is that both DC and Marvel are playing a lot more in this eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine space. And so they're... They're selling these anniversary issues and these bigger issues, and readers are going there. And if you're, you're if you're moving a ten dollar comic book, you may not move to four dollar comic books, and those two four dollar comic books are your middle. Um, I also think that you know those that middle tier of comics, you know the the break, the pandemic, uh, it got people to kind of it it, it starved them out. You know, the, some of them, I think, in many cases, people were buying these middle comics, like say Captain America, out of habit because they have every Captain America in their run. And, you know, we get this forced break, four or five months go by, and it's like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm done. It's a jumping off point. I, I had this big break, I'm just gonna keep it on break. Savage Avengers, I think, is, is ex gonna experience the same thing. It's these comics that people maybe they liked somewhat, or maybe they were collecting out of habit, and those books are, are just kind of, yeah, you know, people are coming back saying, you know, I don't, I don't wanna waste my time with it. You, you, yeah. you start me out. I do feel like we're getting mixed signals from the industry. And I don't even want to go into what John Jackson Miller says, how he's going to like project total sales for the industry. That was, that was confusing enough. But this is what Tim uh, Lenahan, the chief purchasing officer of Jeppy Family Enterprises, obviously the parent company of Diamond Comics Distributors, said of August sales. This is a quote from him. We're very encouraged by the strong performance we saw in many titles this month. The market continues to rebound, and in many, way, in many cases – we're seeing new series debut for many of our other pub of our publishers that are outperforming what we saw in the first quarter. Similarly, the issues established series si similarly issues of established series are seeing increases in sub subsequent issues as well, and we believe this bodes well for the strength of the industry in the third and fourth quarter. So he's just talking; he's kind of cherry picking, but he doesn't yeah. address the big question: What are the overall sales like in comparison to before the pandemic? How do those look? Yeah, and I don't, I don't think anybody really wants to admit it or, or say. I mean, the, the sales are going to be weaker. I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, if I was in charge of one of these companies, I'd be out with it. I'd be saying that because every business is going to be experiencing some level of this. So it's not a, it's not a big secret you have to hide. Uh, the comic industry always wants to kind of put on this bluff that it's doing better than it is in a lot of cases. And I don't know why they do that. It's, the numbers are public enough and everybody knows everybody's suffering. So what, what's, what are you doing? Um, I think the industry, it is going through this transition. We are, this is the year where the comic industry is changing and it's, it's going to change and be in, uh, go in a different direction. And I think a lot of the people who are, who've been in charge and on top are not going to be in charge and on top, you know, this time next year, whether it's Diamond, whether it's uh, people at Marvel or DC. I mean, I, I'll throw one more kind of random thing at you. We saw this week that uh, Disney Parks laid off a massive amount of employees. 28,000 28, people. If they follow suit, they always, when they do their, their big layoffs, they do parks, they do uh, operations, 
and then they do licensing and third and, and products. And so say November, late October, November, this is going to hit Marvel. I, I, I'll just, it's a prediction. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Actually. Is it a spoiler? It's, it's a spoiler. <laughs> I, I hope I'm wrong. I don't want these people to lose their job, but if, if it, if they do what they have done literally every time they've laid off people, this is what's coming. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot that's, that's transitioning and changing in this industry right now. I don't think it's healthy. Um, I think that there, the, the erosion of the middle, I mean, <laughs> it's the erosion of the middle class, but in comics, um, that erosion is not healthy for new books to get started for, you know, you know, experiments to happen in comics for, for bets to be taken. Um, there's not enough money in the industry to flood everyone to the top from a creator standpoint. So it's, it's this isn't a healthy state. At the same time, please, because um, I, I know people kind of get after me for, for being doom and gloom. Um, the industry is not going to die. It's not going to collapse. It means that this change is ha it's going to happen. It's not if it will happen, it, it will happen. And we're going to see a lot of adjustments being made. I think it's good news for the indies. I think the the indies that are, you know, like something is killing the children, like a lot of these books that have come out. Uh, I was very pleased with. Uh, we only find them when we're dead. Uh, these kinds of books. Yeah, there's some good books out there, and I think that uh, their ability to market and and maybe not be drowned out by the noise of some of that that middle tier of Marvel and DC is going to be healthy for them. You know, at the same time, Spider-Man's not going anywhere. Donny Cates is holding up plenty of stuff at Marvel. X-Men will get its act together. Uh, or, you know, if you love it, it will keep going. It, these things will happen. Um, I think Batman's laid out its 2021 future. There's lots of Batman coming. So, so these things are all going to happen. But we're definitely in for a, a pretty major change. And you know, it's interesting. Recently, Jerry Conway, he went on a big Twitter rant on all like... He identified the problem, which I agreed with, although I didn't exactly uh, agree with the time frame in which he, I think he said it started in the 70s. I thought it started in the 90s. That's neither here nor there, but, it, you know, essentially they haven't been attracting new readers. We've been talking about this on the channel, and he said, you need to stop all comics, you know, and, and make a new line of periodic comics aimed at children to get new readers in. And I was like, why would you go out and spend the money to go and build a new audience that you once had? And get and train kids using money because you have to pay for that to get them into to reading periodic comic books again and make that a normal thing. When you have an entire comic book market in graphic novels in color or, or in the bookstore uh, channels, that's growing year by year. Like that's your yeah. avenue to get in. Yeah, I mean, I think we did videos on on that guy on uh, Conway and his comments. Um, I, I mean. In many cases, there are parts of what he said that was right, but his solution was was terrible. It was it was a, a bad solution that he offered up. Um, I, I'll, I'll use this in, yeah, I'll use this analogy. We'll see if it lands uh, with people. It's just like if you think about a race car driver that's doing laps and they're going around, and if the car has a problem, if there's a flat tire or an engine problem or whatever else, pulls over and it's trying to rapidly get repaired so it can get back up on the track. In many cases, they're fixing the car while they're 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 you know they're moved to. <laughs> the goal is to keep momentum. And so when you see these pieces of advice that say we have to stop everything and we have to throw it all out and start all over again, that's that's not how you have a successful business. It's not how you win the race. You have to kind of build and adapt as you're going. You don't throw away your existing audience. You don't just stop what's broken. You have to fix and move at the same time. And that's where comics is at. It's and and you see that naturally happening. I, I mean, again, mm -hmm. not to be a broken record, you got these independent comics that are growing nicely. They're getting their audience going bigger. They are uh, adjusting and growing while they're you know while they're shipping comics. If if right now Marvel, DC, the Indies all said, you know what, the uh, the old audience is too old, it's bad, it's dying off, uh, it's not growing. We need to appeal to the kids. Let's just stop everything, cancel it all, and start over. Um, one very, very low chance that this group of people who has failed to attract that audience would now suddenly get it right. Be successful. <laughs> be successful. And two, I mean, I, a Scholastic would love you to do that at Marvel and DC, please, just because you you basically take yourself out. They The reality is that they're the incumbent, not you. And I think it speaks to some arrogance of some people in the comic industry who believe that, you know, as long as they play the game, they will win. And they're stronger players. Scholastic is a much stronger player in that audience. And and yeah. Marvel. They think because they have the characters, they have the advantage. No, Scholastic has the market. 
Scholastic absolutely has the market and they're building up these things much better. And, and the characters only take you so far. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's you know, comic books to read about the watch or be entertained by those characters. You got movies, you got cartoons, you got video games, you got free video games. You can, you know, yeah, you got to give people a reason to come back. You do. I, I, you, you absolutely do. And, and I think it almost never benefits you in a business to constantly play like you're in the lead. You, you need to play, you know, like you're, you're either threatened or you're behind and be hungry and be aggressive with that. And I think a lot of the indies are going to start or have started doing that. And I think Marvel. And also all the exclusives being broken and there's really no exclusive creators. It feels like yeah. a lot of those creators that would have just been Marvel DC, they're going over to boom, they're going over to image and they're popping these huge numbers with these original ideas. Or sometimes in the case of like, John Thankman's decorum, an idea he's playing with in, in House of X, you know, Dawn of X, and he gets to go play with it in, in a new way in decorum that, you know, maybe more fits his style. So I like that they're getting some crossover and they're going to do their own ideas over in the indies. Yeah. Yeah. And the readers like it too. Those comics are selling. They're able to bring some of their audience. You know, the, the small independent comic publishers need to now not fall into the same trap. Now that they're starting to get some numbers, don't don't immediately do what Marvel and DC has done. Keep keep going with what's causing you to win. But it, it is an interesting time in the industry. Looking at these sales, looking at these numbers, um, it's you know nothing is really going to be reliable where the numbers are concerned for several months now until things get worked out. And so we'll have to go with a lot of anecdotal evidence, which you know that's that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. That's right. All right, Price. Thank you so much for joining me today. Kind of trying to clear some of this up. Absolutely. I don't know if we cleared it up completely, but that's what we got, folks. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoy Perch, but you haven't subscribed to his channel, there is a link in the video description, as well as there is an icon on the screen right now that you can go select that and go subscribe to his channel. I highly recommend it. He's a good friend. He loves comics. Well, same with you. Thank you very much for having me on the show and always thrilled to talk to you.